today we're going to have a look through the Brady Games totally unauthorized Banjo Kazooie strategy guide. I um, found this in a pile of old magazines at my parents' house a few months ago. I was actually hoping that we would be able to look through some Nintendo Power articles, but um, the only Nintendo Powers that I could find were from 2004 and 2005, uh, which was probably close to the end of the, uh, the life of the magazine. Um, I'm actually not sure when they went out of business. But um, I probably have some of those old Nintendo Power issues lying around somewhere. If I'm lucky enough to find them, I will share. But in its in their place, we have this Banjo Kazooie strategy guide, which I'm also very excited to open up and look through. Um, it's pretty beaten up. It's your duty to save Tootie. Gruntilda has captured Banjo's little sister Tootie, hoping to steal her beauty. Mumbo Jumbo, you say. Exactly. You'll need more than his help to make your way through nine hair-raising levels of Gruntilda's lair bring Sis back home. Get every Jigsaw, Jinjo, Honeycomb, Mumbo Token, and more. Step-by-step -step walkthrough leads you through all nine levels. Winning strategy for both Gruntilda battles, plus complete character, move, and power-up profiles. I feel like $10 is a good deal for a strategy guide these days. But this is probably from the mid 90s, late 90s, late 90s. Uh, 1998, it says here. So we've got a staff list here, some credits table of contents. It's 111 pages long. Wow. Um, we've got the intro, characters, moves, stuff to find, important stuff, Mumbo's Mountain, Treasure Trove Grove, Clanker's Cavern, Bubble Gloop Swamp, Freeze Easy Peak, Gobi's Valley, Mad Monster Mansion, Rusty Bucket Bay, Cliff Clock Wood, and then we have Gruntilda Hints, and the two battles against Gruntilda. So here's the intro. I'm not going to read this, but um, if you want to pause it, you can read it for yourself. So we have the cast of characters. We have Banjo here and Kazooie. I have played this game recently. Um, I played through it a few weeks ago or a few months ago, and uh, I collected all the jigsaws for the first time. I'd never collected all of them before, so it was uh, it was it wasn't that easy. It was tough. We have bottles over here, and Tootie, who we're going to rescue. There's Big Bad Gruntilda, her sister Brentilda, who's very nice. She shares, shares all sorts of 
very silly facts about Gruntilda throughout the game. Um, and then we have Mumbo Jumbo. So the different moves, Banjo Punch, Forward, Attack Roll, rat a tat rap kicking bird flip, egg shoot, egg shoot back, where it's more like an egg poop. It's funny that they don't use a different term. It's, I wouldn't really call it shooting. Well, talon trot. The beak buster attack. See, they say butt slam down here. Why don't they call it the, uh, the butt shoot then? Shock jump. Flying. Beak bomb attack. Termite, Mumbo's Mountain. So these are the different transformations. The alligator in Bubble Gloop Swamp. This one was always my favorite. I liked being the alligator and trudging through the swamp. The walrus and Freeze Easy Peak. The pumpkin in Mad Monster Mansion. The bee in your click clockwood, which it's fun to be the bee because you can fly, and that's always fun. Here's the good stuff to find. Gruntilda's block, which unlocks stuff, it opens this, which more or less is hidden on each stage. It opens a secret in the overworld that leads to one of the ten Gruntilda jigsaw pieces, right? So it unlocks jigsaws. We have honeycombs, which if you collect six of these, the life bar increases by one. The jigsaw piece. There are 10 of these on each level. Uh, the Jinjos, where I think there's five of them on each level. The musical notes, which that was something I didn't finish, was collecting all of the notes. I got most of them, but not all of them. Mumbo Tolkien. Spellbook has cheat codes. I remember finding this recently and being um, being surprised. I had I didn't find any of them when I was younger, when I was a kid. Red feathers for flying eggs. Yellow feathers. Worms and acorns. That's just a click clock wood thing. Uh, wading boots, speed shoes. Okay, so important stuff. There's trouble in the land, and this time Banjo and his fearless bird friend won't be able to sleep through the commotion because it involves Banjo's curious sister Tootie. So jump out of bed, get ready for an action packed journey deep within Gruntilda's lair. Before you venture into this evil place, make sure you meet with bottles and prepare for the hard tasks that lay ahead. Yes, this is a practice tutorial, but there are secrets hidden about. Here's what to look for as you go through bottles as exercises. Right. So this is right outside Spiral Mountain. Shows you where to collect the honeycombs. Six honeycombs and an extra life. And then it begins. So you make your way inside of Gruntilda's lair. Helpful hints. Don't step on an egg on the exit until you have all the music notes. Use the banjo cam to line up difficult shots with eggs. Killing all of the enemies on a level 
helps out in the long run. Explore the overworld thoroughly and grab all of the mumbo tokens you can. Also, opening warps helps. Listen to Brantilda carefully. She is annoying, but she knows what she's talking about. That sounds like most teachers I've ever had. That's not true. That's a joke. Listen to your teachers. Mumbo's Mountain is level one. So, this is a really steep slope on the side of this mountain. And it says here that the Talon truck comes in, in handy. So, use that to collect a bunch of the notes. This level is very easy. It reminds me a lot of uh, the bomb on, bomb on Battlefield in uh, Super Mario 64. It's just nice and green and pleasant and it's not difficult and there's a couple of bad characters that aren't really intimidating at all and uh, you can learn your, how to use the different skills and, and get your get your bearings right so it goes through a couple of the jigsaws we've got this one first over here which is Congo's treasure and then we've got this one down here where you bring the fruit to Congo's little buddy. It says that it's Diddy. I never knew that it was Diddy. Piece three. Oh, it's shooting Congo. And then piece four is up on top of the uh, stone hedge. for piece five. Mumbo's hut for piece six. Totem tower. Where you shoot the eggs into the totem's mouth. Must open the huts. Use the ant to get up to the top of the ant hill and collect all the gingos. Overall, this level is really easy, but that's fun. Here it shows the honeycombs and the gingos, which we won't go through. The mumbo tokens. And Gruntilda's block. It's too bad I didn't have this when I was playing through a few months ago. It would have been extremely helpful. So it does feel a little bit like cheating, doesn't it? I guess it is. These games are fun because they're all about exploring and discovery, not just following instructions. But it's still nice to have this once you get through everything, or if you get stuck on something, to go back and, you know, complete everything that you missed. Well, then we go to Treasure Trove Grove, where um, it, it gets significantly harder once you start moving along to the next few levels. Um, Treasure Trove Grove introduces a few enemies that are a little more annoying, like like the shark and um, and the crabs. Uh, there's this black crab too inside of. Um, I think his name is Nip. It doesn't even say his name here, but I think it's like Nip or something. Anyway, he's got some nasty critters inside of him that try to kill you. There's another mean crab here. Maybe that's just the, the, the black crab that I'm thinking of. Anyway, this is, um, this is where you'll start using your feathers a whole lot and start flying and doing, um, finding a few more complicated pieces and you get this sh the shock uh, the shock pad makes because we jump really high so you'll go through and there's the shark there there's a bunch of gingos all over the place 
It's a cool level because you can fly to the very top of the level. And there's like a little oasis up on top with a little light tower. That's where you'll find Gruntilda's block. Clanker's Cavern. So of course, like any game that Nintendo puts out, they incorporate the swimming levels. And uh, Clanker's Cavern isn't isn't really an annoying swimming level. It kind of has the same sort of textures and and uh, colors that you'd see in Jabu Jabu's belly in Zelda. Um, so get the invincibility shields here, which are helpful, especially later in Click Clock and. Uh, few other levels. I remember this this one. You have to swim through a big key underwater. If you don't do it fast enough you drown. So that's a really that's a really annoying jigsaw piece. Um, inside of Clanker is kind of fun. That's what reminds me of Jabu Jabu's Valley, but like an industrial version of Jabu Jabu's Valley. You shoot out his teeth to get in, or you go through the blowhole. Then there's a bunch of pipes that you can bust the uh, the grates on. And there's hidden things inside, like honeycombs and chinchus, and of course the tokens. Here's the Gruntilda's block, which is um, uh, inside Clanker somewhere. I don't. I guess it's through the um, the teeth, the uh, the grinders, whatever whatever they're called, that you that you would um, use the invincibility to get through. But when I see speed runs of the game, I just see people just running straight through them with Talon Trot, and it looks very easy the way that they do it. So. Onto Bubble Gloop Swamp, level four, which is one of my favorite levels. Um, there's a bunch of uh, cool enemies and, um, and and fun puzzles on this level that I really like. There's this uh, this big uh, turtle tank tub, and you can go inside him. And then there's this little turtle orchestra in there. Here they are. Tank Tuff's mouth and complete the musical challenge for a prize. And then there's the alligator here that you have to beat him grabbing all of the different um, worms or something. I forget what they are. Different colors, worms, the green or the red. And then there's some platform, some platforming you have to do that's fun. Overall, I, I think it's one of the better levels. I like the design of it too. I like the colors and I like the feel of it. Also reminds me of Zelda. Uh, early in Zelda. Actually, I guess it m more Majora's Mask than Ocarina of Time. And we'll go to Freeze Easy Peak, which has probably my favorite mu music in, in the game. Oh look, here we are, page 64. And I'm, uh, I'm being sarcastic when I say that it's my favorite music. I actually think it's really annoying. Um, yeah, the music mixed with these snowmen laughing is probably the, the worst noise combo in any Nintendo 64 game that's ever been released. Ha ha ha. They go ha 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 and they throw snowballs at you and they're surprisingly very, very accurate. Um, this level's fun. It is fun. Besides, once you kill all of the snowmen, which you just have to beat bomb them in their, in their hats. There's an X on their hats. You just beat bomb them. You can climb the giant snowman, and uh, 
you can fly around and hit his buttons and stuff. And then you can race the uh, the large walrus guy, which is fun. And then there's the Jinjos. The, this, the walrus race is actually kind of hard um, if you don't know what you're doing. I, I learned probably after my, my second or third try that you should be jumping up the inclines or else they slow you down dramatically. And then one of the Quintilda's blocks is under one of these laughing snowmen. So now we've made it to Gobi's Valley, level 6, which is fun, but uh, it's hard. This, this, this level is when the game starts getting difficult, I'd say. There's so many opportunities to die in this sand that it gets frustrating if um, you have so many musical notes scattered and then you die. Some of the puzzles are, are pretty are pretty fun too. Um, there's lots of uh, lots of good designs too. I love the uh, I love the actual Kobe character. The he's the camera. And, um, you bring you feed the, the thirsty tree by stomping on his back. Level 7 is Mad Monster Mansion, which I think is a, uh, a unique level. Um, you don't really see uh, another level like this in, in any other game that I can really think of. Like a Monster Mansion level. It's really cool. They did all sorts of fun stuff with it. They made a little church that you can go into really spooky with the organ and then there's this graveyard and there's uh, and obviously there's the mansion and there's this hedge maze that um, you can get destroyed in by the by the different enemies <laughs> the toilet you can actually turn into the pumpkin and flush yourself down the toilet which is hilarious the ghosts, which I didn't understand how to beat. I had to look that up. Uh, and then I, f I learned that you can use the invincibility feathers to destroy the ghosts, which is helpful. Um, overall, great level. I, this was one of the levels that I had to return to later on to collect the musical notes because I didn't finish it the first time I went through. Okay. To Rusty Bucket Bay. This level is really hard. I think it's the hardest level in the game. Um, there's so many ways to die in this level. I remember getting pretty frustrated trying to collect all the musical notes here. And I'm not sure if I actually finished or not. I think I did. This this piece eight here. Stay within this area and hit the two additional fan switches on the far left and right sides. Now haul to the back of the boat and dive into the polluted water. Swim quickly to the fan and grab a piece. I think this is regarded as the hardest jiggy in the game. Um, it's really hard to get there in time. Uh, you, you're inside of this this like um, engine room in the, in, in the bottom of the, the ship. and. Um, you have to make your way back up from the engine room, uh, going through all these deadly chopping blades. And then you have to climb this huge ladder, then you have to make your way to the end of the ship, then you have to swim through the polluted water, and you have to get to the jiggy before the fans turn back on, which it gives you like 30 seconds. It's really hard, but I did manage to get it done. With a, with a, I, it probably took me like 10 times to get it though. Jinjos. There's lots of hidden areas in this level too. There are all sorts of different little cargo holds which have different secrets hidden in them. And then the last level, Click Clock Wood. 
which I think is the most fun level. Um, it's easily the biggest um, level in terms of uh, the different types of um, puzzles and, uh, and stuff that you need to do. Um, there's four different seasons to the level, so you have to go through the level four times to collect everything, which uh, makes it last a lot longer than the other levels. I think um, I think my favorite was Fall. But there are some really great characters in this level too. There's the squirrel. There's the eagle. There's the beaver. There are these great enemies that come out of their holes and chomp at you. And then you can turn into the bee and fly, which is fun. There's a challenge to collect all the worms that you have to give to the eagles. Yeah. Ooh, so here's all the Gruntilda hits. Why don't we read them? Number one. Gruntilda brushes her rotten teeth with moldy cheese. Number two, she washes her hair with engine oil. Number three, she gets her clothes from Saggy Maggie's Boutique. Number four, Gruntilda's nickname was Cauldron Butt at Witch School. Number five, Sweaty Gorilla Feet is her favorite smell. Number six, her favorite color is dung brown. It's my favorite color. Gruntilda wears a flea circus under that repulsive dress of hers. She has a nasty pet dog whose name is Ripper. She sings in her own band, the Broomstick Boys, and Fatty Hattie was Gruntilda's best friend in witch school. When relaxing, she usually reads Big Butts and Guts magazine while sipping a glass of her favorite worm juice. Her bedroom has rotting fish hanging from the ceiling. She also has a loogie brush growing in a pot beside her bed. Oh, bush. I thought it said brush. And you'd be sick if you saw her enormous, sweaty, yellow undies. Her favorite sport is belly barging. <laughs> Although she's dim, she attended St. Dungball's school. You won't believe that Gruntilda's party trick is blowing up balloons with her butt. Then there are the battles against Gruntilda. First you have to go through the game show. And then you make your way to the roof. And you battle her on the roof. And then the giant ginger comes and finishes her off. So that's the strategy guide. I know we didn't really go into depth about many of the jigsaw puzzles or uh, the details, but it was fun to look through the levels and talk about it a little bit. And, and um, it's, I'm surprised at how well this thing has held up being buried underneath so much garbage these last two decades. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, please subscribe and like the video, and um, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much.